This video is going to go, going to go over numbers 23 to 25 on your Algebra 1 Keystone Review Packet. 23, simplify the following expression. Uh, both 23 and 24 really come from Chapter 12, Section 3 of the Algebra Holt Book. Um, we're simplifying a fraction. So think about how you simplify a fraction with numbers. The only way you can reduce a fraction is if it has a common factor. So 4 twelfths, you would just cross that out and get one third, but how did you get there? Well, really, you can do this because 4 is 4 times 1 and 12 is 4 times 3. And once you have a product, you can cancel out a factor that is a, that is a number that is a factor of both. You can only do this when it's multiplication though. Okay, so you really should rewrite it as a product. Here, on this first one, some of you might be trying to just cancel out the 3x and 3x. Well, you can only cancel out a 3x if it's a product. Right here, 3x is being added, okay? But we don't have to give up. We can do something with this. Look at that numerator. Sorry, this is a 3x cubed. Look at that numerator. That numerator can be factored. So pull out a GCF. What exists in both the numerator and the denominator? Well, the numerator, every single term has a 3x. When you pull that out, what do you have left on the inside? So divide each of these by a 3x so that you have it on the outside. 3x cubed divided by 3x is just x squared. 18x squared divided by 3x. 18 divided by 3 is 6. x squared divided by x leaves me just an x. And then a minus 15x divided by 3x. Negative 15 divided by 3 is a minus 5. X divided by X, there's no X's left with that 5. The denominator can't be factored, we just have a 3X. Now, we have a product. We have 3X times this whole thing, and we have 3X in the bottom. You can put times 1 if you want, you don't really need it. Because they both have a factor of 3X, those can cancel. Just like you did here, 4 can be rewritten, 12 can be rewritten, 4 is a factor of both. 3x is a factor of both, so they cancel out. Why do they cancel? Because this is 4 over 4, and 4 divided by 4 is really 1. Well, this is 3x over 3x, and anything divided by itself is really just 1. So the answer is really just 1 times this, or we don't really need to show the multiplying by 1 because it doesn't change anything. So your answer is x squared plus 6x minus 5. If you're simplifying rational express expressions, you're simplifying fractions with polynomials, try to factor first. That's going to be my same recommendation for number 24. So take a look at 24 if you had a question with it. When I see that denominator, right away I want to factor this. Why? Because there's an x squared and then an x and then a constant. And by now I'm used to seeing that trinomials a lot of times, not always, but a lot of times can be factored. So let me try to factor this denominator. x squared can be, come from x times x. What multiplies to give me a negative 42, but adds to give me just a negative or a negative 1. Well, the factors of 42 are 6 and 7, and those have a difference of 1. I need a negative 1, so I need more negatives. My 7 is more negative. They multiply to give me a negative, so the other one must be positive. Now when I'm looking at this, right now if I just have negative x minus 6, is there anything that cancels? No, because nothing repeats. On this first example, you have a 3x and a 3x. Those are exactly the same, so they can cancel. Well, in 24, these are really close. So let's pull a negative 1 out of this polynomial on the top. Negative 1 times whatever I would have left. Negative x divided by negative 1 is x. Negative 6 divided by negative 1 is a positive 6. Now, look at your problem. We have a product. We have multiplication, so we can cancel out a factor if it's in both the numerator and the denominator. Well, x plus 6 is a whole, that whole thing is a factor in both of them. 
because it's in parentheses, I can cancel those. What am I left with? A negative 1 over x minus 7. That's a tough one to see. So your correct answer is D. So look for that. If you see like the same terms but different signs, try factoring out a negative 1. That might get you to where you want to be. Number 25. Now this is a tough problem. You may not have gotten this one the first time you try to do it. Chances are there might only be one of these problems in the test. You might, only, you might not see anything like this at all. We wanted to show you. So here's a polynomial expression, and the expression simplifies to 8x cubed plus 6x squared plus 15x plus 6. What is the value of m? What number should be here so that when I multiply this and then I subtract, I get this? Okay, well, that's a lot of work. You could, this is an option, it's not the best option, but you could put in each number for m and then multiply it and then subtract any like terms and see if it gets that. And if a doesn't work, then try b. Put in 4, to multiply it out and then subtract and keep going. That's going to take you a long time. Let's use some logic here, okay? The m is attached to the x cubed term. And down here, I end up with an 8x cubed. So where does that 8x cubed term come from? Well, let's think about what would happen when you were doing this problem. The first thing you would do is you would distribute. You would do this times this, but that would give me an x to the fifth power, so that, doesn't, that wouldn't be in this term, right? This would give me x to the fourth power. This would give me, ooh, that would give me an x cubed power. So I would have mx cubed times the 2 at some point when I distribute, and somehow I end up getting an 8x cubed. Let's see if there's any other way I can get an 8x cubed. I would have 3 times 2x squared. That would give me an x squared, not an x cubed. This would give me just an x. This would just give me a constant. You're not subtracting out any x cubed terms. So this is really all you need from all of that information. What would be in the m spot if you end up getting an 8x cubed? Basically, m times 2 equals 8. What times 2 equals 8? So m would be equal to 4. Now, if you don't see that logic, that this is going to be a very tough problem. It's probably not worth your time to try every single problem. Maybe skip it and come back to it on a test. But if that's the only method you can use, then use that. But try to think logically. You know, this is belonging to an 8x, this is belonging to an x cubed. So the only way I could keep an x cubed term would be to take that times a constant. That's the only one that matters. If you have questions on this still, please see your teacher.